Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words with me, your host, Kevin Treasure, author of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Our aim is to help people win in life through the power of their words. You are born to win. Hey, bless you, bless you, bless you. Welcome to another edition of The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality with me, your host, Pastor Kevin Treasure, helping you win with the power of your words. I'm going to let you know your words are powerful. Your words have life. Amen. Your words can build up and encourage and strengthen. And your words can also destroy and pull down and wreak havoc. There used to be an old saying back when I was young, say sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But when I get older, I realize that is so not true. Sticks and stones may break bones, but bones heal. But words sometimes never heal. And I'm here to encourage someone that, listen, God has a plan. He knows exactly what where you are he loves you and he cares for you and he's calling you home stay tuned for the message that i'm about to bring someone needs to hear this stay tuned this is me kevin treasure the power of words the winner's mentality the new book by author kevin treasure the power of words the winner's mentality out now consists of 21 chapters regarding the use, effects, benefits, and consequences of the words we speak and the influence they have on our lives and the lives of those around us. Discover how to hold your tongue in the most trying times. Discover the real power you possess with the words you speak. Discover how what you say has a profound effect on your life. No person desiring success should be without this book. This book will teach you how to live a victorious life, which includes 24 winner's mentality points regarding wise words, 17 winner's mentality points regarding anger, 16 reasons why saying nothing is wisdom, 10 ways to frame your future with your tongue, 6 winner's mentality points regarding good health. The book is available in paperback and ebook format. Order your copy today, priced at $9.99. Available from www.kevintreasure.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, and many more. Or call 07903-940-399. The Power of Words. The Winner's Mentality. Get your copy today. Welcome back here, man, with me, Kevin Treasure, the power of words and winner's mentality, helping you win in life with the power of your words. And today, I just want to encourage someone. I know it may seem like a, a strange title, but I want to let you know that God is calling home many, many people. I want to let you know there was a little story that I had. As you know, I'm a pastor, I'm an author, I'm a mentor, a motivator, I'm a father and a husband <laughs> and a son and so many other things. I'm an encourager. And most of all, I'm a friend. To many and i'm gonna hope you know, this these podcasts have been encouraging you it's been nearly a year since we've been putting out these podcasts and we're good to have your feedback so if it's been encouraging you if it's been blessing you contact me reach out to me kevintreasure.com reach out to me on my email reach out to me on facebook and then kevin treasure reach out to me on instagram the winner's mentality or you can e- email me info at decisions com. i'm going to say that again info at decisionsdeterminedestiny.com let me know how it's reaching you and if you've got any testimonies let me know i want to know how this is affecting your life how it's encouraging you because i truly believe we live in a time where many people need encouragement and i'm a person yes i'm a pastor but i'm an evangelist at heart and i'm a person i really like to take the gospel to the streets because people need to hear the gospel of jesus christ and i'm not diverting to the message of the actual program which is the power of words because uh, words have power but i want to let you know how your words can build up and there's someone waiting to hear your voice there's someone waiting to hear what you've got to say there's something inside you that has been preordained and packaged to be a blessing to others i'm going to say that again there's something inside you which has been preordained and packaged to bless the lives of other people and some people look at themselves and they say i'm insignificant i'm not important oh how can i affect my generation how can i affect my society listen to me no one can do what you can do god of you may not notice but god loves variety amen we we come in all different shapes and sizes if you look in the sea the amount of fishes that are in the sea the amount of animals insects birds and all kinds of things that are in the world you can see that we have a god that loves variety he doesn't make anything the same no two human beings are the same you are made for a purpose your eyes see your nose smell your mouth speaks your hands feel your feet walk and your heart beats every part of your body 
serves a purpose you were born for your purpose so listen to me i'm here to encourage you that there is purpose on the inside of you and sometimes i like to take the gospel to the streets um because i'm from the streets i grew up in south london um a very notorious area in south london but god changed me at the age of 25 and god called me and that's where i've always taken back now i'm not one of those people that stand on the roadside and say you better repent you're all gonna die no, no i'm not that guy that that's not the gospel the gospel is good news so the good news is to know that listen to me while we're yet sinners christ died for us amen god loves us he has a plan for us amen he says he's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking so i let people know that they're forgiven because i speak to many people and say preach you don't know what i've done that's i tell people listen i don't care what you've done who you've done it with and how long you've been doing it god is forgiven and you all he's asking you is just repent and put your trust in his son christ jesus the bible says the god that justifies the ungodly that means he declares you righteous and all you need to do is trust him not your good works good works can't do it it's not by works that we are saved it's simply his grace that means his unmerited favor which we did not deserve and god is saying i need you i've sent my son to die in your place i he took what we deserve the bible says he became sin for us that we could become the righteousness of god in christ jesus and he's saying i love you so when i stand on the streets i'm preaching a message of love and say god is love yes there is a judgment waiting for those that don't accept him but why wait until then now is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation today if you hear his voice don't harden your heart and i went on the street somewhere down the east london on the high street and and i was there and i couldn't even get to park so I, I, it's quite far where i parked and i couldn't get to bring my boom box as they call it and i was just there and i was just really not really feeling it and i was there and i was like okay god where do you want me today because i like to listen to what the holy ghost is saying where he wants me where he wants me to go where he wants me and then to make an impact where best of my words are going to be an impact and make a difference in the lives of those that need him and i walked up and down the high street and it just wasn't happening i just wasn't getting the unction amen to preach there or to speak there and i was like okay god and then i was walking back to my car and i was a bit um how can i say it? i won't say depressed but i was a bit um how can i say it yeah, I, was, I was a bit upset because I'm like, oh, come on God I, I came out here to make a difference I came out here with the sole purpose to tell people about Jesus amen the world needs to hear about Jesus listen to me if you are saved the world needs to hear about Jesus you are his mouthpiece in the earth he is the head we are the body and let me tell you something now, the head doesn't do all the work the body does the work we are his hands and feet in the earth and we need to be his mouthpiece in the earth so I'm walking back to the car and I'm a bit dejected and I'm like oh man and as I get back to the car and I'm about to open the boot and I look to the right and I see a park. I know the park's there. And then I see all these uh, like alcoholics and drug addicts and I see all these um, down and outs. And it's just the light bulb came in and I said, they need the gospel. So I took my boom box out of the boot and I remember I was about to go in my car and drive. I, took, I just looked to the right and I saw, listen, all these people in the park and this is where all the, the drunkards were, the alcoholics, the drug addicts were, and all the people doing shady characters and all kind of stuff i said let me bring my box in the park so i brought my box in the park and they started saying oh you got to play some bob marley for us yeah what's gonna happen and i like, no no bob marley i'm gonna i'm gonna bring you the gospel it's like oh gospel music hey i'm gonna bring some gospel music and one of them looked at us and said he's not playing gospel music he's gonna he's a preacher isn't he? he's a preacher so one of them already cottoned on and I said, I want to encourage someone out here. And I, I just felt led to speak to the story about the prodigal son. So this is my story. So I started explaining to them this. And there was a man that had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, he said, give me the portion. This is Luke 15. Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Now you've got to know that this wasn't due to him. He didn't deserve this. This is not how it worked. Amen. When the father died, you get inheritance when you die, not when someone's alive. If I was to come to my mom and say, or my parents and say, I need my inheritance now, how dare you? That's not how it works. Amen. And it's the older son that usually gets the bigger portion. And the Bible says that the father divided unto them his living. And the young and the, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together 
and he took his journey into a far country. So I started telling him, listen, the younger son, he took what he, he took what he had and he went to live it up. He went to party. He went to discos. He went to raves, whatever age group you are, amen. But he went out there and he lived his life. He went to strip clubs. He went to bars. Amen. He done some things that he shouldn't do. And the Bible says that he wasted his living. The Bible said he wasted his substance with righteous living. So if he was a drug addict, he was doing drugs. He was doing cocaine, amphetamines, smoking marijuana. He was drinking. He was living up with champagne and all kinds of whatever champagne tickles your fancy. Don Perignon and whatever it is that he was drinking. But he was living up. He was buying drinks. And when you've got money, you are the life and soul of the party. I want to say when you've got money, all of a sudden friends come your way. Friends that you never knew you had. When you have money, listen to me everybody wants to be around you especially someone that is really flash with their money and the bible says he lived it up and i started explaining to them i don't know where some of you are i don't know how you got in the situation that you're in and i'm talking to the drug addicts i'm talking to the alcoholics i'm talking to these people these people and some of them are listening some of them are shouting and some of them are saying well what about this what about that but as you know that my voice can be louder than anybody else's because i'm a preacher this is what i do so i'm just starting telling them that listen i don't know where you are in life and i don't know what you got to what you've done to get where you are but this guy messed up his life and the bible says when he spent all he had there arose a mighty famine and it's funny how the famine arose after he spent all he had now if the famine arose while he was partying he could have looked and said hey i better slow down because there's a famine in the land but the bible says the famine arose when he has spent all he had so the bible says now he's in the same predicament as everybody else and all of a sudden he's down and out and the friends are gone and everybody's gone and everybody used to rave with and everybody used to party with everybody used to go out with and the boys used to hang with nobody's there and you've got yourself in a situation and now you may be strung out on drugs and maybe you may be hitting the bottle and maybe in a situation that you don't want to be in and a situation you never thought you'd find yourself in and you're falling from the top right to the bottom and you're a place of abject poverty and I said to them listen to me I don't know where you are right now and there's this one guy he was just listen was a few guys listening but one guy was looking at me really sternly like like he wanted to fight me but the bible says don't be scared of their faces so some people you, you don't know what's going on in their minds so he was just looking at me really like serious like he like he wanted to beat me up but i just kept preaching the gospel because like i said i don't look at the faces and the bible says and it began to be and when he had spent all he was there rose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want so i'm just explaining to them and, and i'm speaking on a level that they can understand and i'm bringing it home to them that he got he got to a place where he shouldn't be and the Bible says he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country. So he wasn't in his own country. He was in a faraway land where no one can see him. And it said sometimes we go so far away from our families and friends that no one can see what we're up to. So no one can report on us. So we can get up to the things that we want to do and do our heart's desire. And this guy had done all the bad things that he thought he could possibly do. But then when the day, days were over, when he had lived his best life, so he thought he got to a place where he didn't want to be. And the Bible says that he had started to work with this man and he started to feed pigs. Now, if you don't know, Jewish people see pigs as the lowest of the low. They don't eat pigs. And for a Jewish man to now be eating, feeding pigs. And the Bible said he got so hungry that he wanted them all to say himself. He would have eaten what the pigs had eaten because no man gave unto him and he got himself to a place where no man's giving to him no man's helping him and i said you may be in this place you may be strung out in drugs and no one's helping you because you may have gone into your parents house stolen everything that you can steal just to feed your habit you may be an alcoholic and some alcoholics that i know because i speak to people from all walks of life and some of the alcoholics that i know personally when they're not drinking they are very nice people i mean amazing people really nice people and the thing that's messing up their life is to drink and if you are the sound of my voice and you are there right now and the thing that's messing up your life is the drink god is here to deliver you from that life he's here to deliver you from the bondage of alcohol he can break every chain off your life he can break every addiction that once held you bound i know some people and I, me personally i grew up in an in estate and if you're in america you'd call them um, projects if you was in brazil you call them pavelas or ghettos depending on where you are you get the picture and i saw what drugs did to my community i saw what drugs did to people that were very close to me there was some girl when i was in school 
uh, Suzanne, I remember her, we grew up together, she was an A-class student, she was in the grade below me, A-class student, listen to me, she never had boyfriends, she was just an A-class student, good girl, pretty girl, but after she left school, she started hanging around with the wrong people, and wrong crowd, and they started doing cocaine, and before you know it, that was the 90s, early 90s, and then she starts freebasing on crack, and before you know it, I've heard that she's a prostitute, on the streets of Brixton selling herself and I didn't see her for a long time and when I did see her in my early 20s and I I was just shocked and flabbergasted of what the enemy can do to someone and I hate drugs with a passion because I've seen what it done to some I'd seen what it done to some good friends of mine I had another friend he was a pretty boy handsome boy light skin tall the girls used to flock around him crazy crazy and he started hanging around with some wrong friends and some wrong influences, some older guys. And he started hitting crack and he just went down and mental health and he just messed up his life. And I remember me and another friend going to see him in in, um, in a mental health hospital. And even now, oh yes, he's recovered. He's not on drugs, but he's not the person that he used to be. So I would like to encourage people, listen, if you're in a place where, listen to me, you know the enemy has messed up your life, you know, drugs or alcohol, or you've got yourself in a situation, you're in a relationship that you know is not right, and you're in a relationship that's bringing you down, an abusive relationship, listen to me, I say, get out, get out now, don't wait until it's too late, get out now. And this boy had got himself into a place where he was at the bottom. Listen, he had hit rock bottom. But I want to let you know, listen to me, when you hit rock bottom, Jesus is that rock that's at the bottom. Amen. He's that rock that can lift you up. And the Bible says, And and he would have fain, he would have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself... He had to come to himself. And sometimes that's the longest road for anybody. Sometimes that's the longest road for any man to come to himself. You can go a lot of places, but sometimes the longest journey back is when you come to yourself and you realize where you are. You realize I'm not the man I used to be. When you look in the mirror and you see, and you say, when you see what drugs has done to yourself, you see what alcohol has done, you see where you've been. When you look and you see you're in a situation you don't want to be in and you say, You've got to come to yourself and say, I don't want to be here anymore. I've helped a lot of people, encouraged a lot of people, um, counseled a lot of people. But the, unless you come to that realization where you say, I don't want to be here anymore, you're going to stay right where you are. And this young man came to himself. And in a roundabout way, I was telling him a story. He came to himself and he said, how many servants has my father got? And bread enough to eat. And, and I'm here perishing with hunger. And he said to himself, I will arise. Now this program is called the power of words, the winner's mentality. He had to speak to himself. And sometimes we have to speak to ourselves. He said, I will arise. Because you're not going to do anything until you speak it. I'm going to say that again. You're not going to do anything in this life until you speak it first. God is a God. Listen to me. Everything that God said he's going to do. Everything that God done, he spoke it first. He said, let there be light and there was light let the sea be formed let the animals let the earth bring forth the animals of the earth amen let us make man in our own image and in likeness god didn't do anything in this world until he spoke it we're made in the image of god and we're just the same we don't do anything in the world until we speak it so when we speak things happen because death and life are in the power of the tongue and he said i will arise and there's someone at the sound of my voice who's saying i will arise i am gonna get off drugs i am gonna get clean i am gonna sober up and there's some of you saying listen preach i've tried it before i've been to rehab and rehab's failed listen to me i don't care where you've been this time you're gonna try jesus because jesus never fails and wherever you are you can just call upon the name of the lord the bible said he that calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved wherever you are right now i don't care if you're in the God, I don't care if you're in a crack house. I don't care where you're listening to this broadcast from. It's on your phone. I don't care where you are right now. If you just call upon the name of the Lord, he said you shall be saved. Amen. The Bible said of the heart man believes and of the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. And he said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto my father, I have sinned. He said, I have sinned. What he was saying, I'm going to repent against heaven and before thee. I've sinned. And he said, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. 
make me one of your hired servants and I'm preaching this and I'm speaking to this I've got their attention now because I'm saying listen to me he spoke up he returned and I said me some of you like myself you may not I have a father or grown up with a father but you can return back to your heavenly father and say I've sinned I've messed up please just clean me up and I want to let you know some people's perception of God needs to change God is not on heaven condemning us and saying oh you've sinned oh you've messed up oh he's not there of like oh I wanted to strike you down the Bible says he's delivered us from wrong through the son Christ Jesus all we need to do is put our trust in Jesus he returned back to the father and the father's calling many of you back home and he said I have need of you I have work for you amen you're lovely you're beautiful you're precious in my sight I don't care what people are saying about you I know the potential that is in you and God is saying I want to clean you up and the Bible says as he came home he said as he walked home the Bible says and as he arose, he came to his father. But when he was a great far off, when he was far off, his father was waiting for him. And his father ran to him and had compassion and fell on his neck and he kissed him. So he's waiting for you. So wherever you are, I want to let you know that God is waiting for you right where you are. He's waiting for you and he's calling you home. You may be listening from prison and you may be in prison. You may be doing five years, ten years. You may be even doing life and you may have messed up big time but God is saying right where you are you can still come back to me and make a difference with the rest of your life you may be in a place of abject poverty and no man's given to you, you may be in skid row you may be homeless you may be in a homeless shelter you may be not, just lost your house or lost your job you may be even contemplating suicide and you don't know what to do I want to let you know like the prodigal son you've got to speak to yourself and say I will arise it's time to come back you've tried everything else you tried drugs tried women tried men tried all kind of things tried amphetamines and crack and heroin and all kind of things that you thought could make you happy and you thought could give you life and you thought could give you a high but all it was doing is making you bound and addicted but let me tell you something now you tried everything else jesus is saying try me jesus is saying try me I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man can come unto the Father except by the Son. And he said, listen to me, I'm no more worthy. I've sinned against you. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the Father said to his servants, bring me the best role. I want to let you know, listen to me, this is the attitude of Father. Some people have a, a problem with prosperity. I don't have a problem with prosperity. Listen to me, God wants to bless his children. He said, bring me the best role. I want to let you know that God doesn't want to give you mediocre. God wants to give you the best. In your sorry state, if you just come to him and say, God, I'm sorry, I'm coming back to you with an honest and pure heart. He wants to give you the best role. He wants to put that ring on your finger, shoes on your feet. What does he want to do? He wants to clothe you with his righteousness. Not your righteousness, with his righteousness. This young man didn't deserve it. He took what he didn't deserve. He took what wasn't he wasn't supposed to take he went away he spent it all he lived a righteous life he messed up his life and he came back and he knows that he doesn't deserve it none of us do none of us deserve it that's why it's called grace and the father says i'm giving him the best robe i'm putting a ring on his finger sandals on his feet and i'm going to kill the fat calf the one that i've had saved for this moment amen i'm going to celebrate so god says i want you to come back so i can celebrate your life Listen to me, where you are right now, maybe nothing to celebrate. But God is saying, if you just come home to me, I can celebrate you. I'm going to cause people to celebrate you. I'm going to celebrate first. Because this was once my son and once my daughter that was lost. But now you're found. God wants to celebrate you. He wants to celebrate. He wants to love on you. Amen. He wants to throw a big party for you. I'm not even going to go into the other brother. I'm not going to go into the people that are not happy for you. God isn't interested in that. Amen. God is interested in you. He's interested in you right where you are. You that are going through abuse, you that are going through pain, you that are struggling with suicidal thoughts, you that are struggling with addiction, alcoholism, you that are struggling to break free from the rejection of the past and the things that people have said about you, you that are homeless, you that are jobless, you that are feel that life is not worth going on, life is worth going on. He's saying, Return unto me. And I'm speaking, and, and, and they're like, They're listening. And I said, nah, and I gave them an invitation for the call as I give right now. I say, listen to me, your life can change. And I, I started speaking to a white guy, this Caucasian guy. And he was telling me, preacher, you know, I hear what you're saying. But preacher, look where I live. He said, I live in a tent. And he showed me where he lives. He lives in a tent in the park. 
he had a tent in the park and I was like wow so this is where I live he said I want to pray for you he'd given his life to the Lord he'd given his life to Jesus right there on the spot and he said I want to pray for you I said when do you want to move out when do you want a place because I like to listen to me I'm a person the Bible says with God nothing shall be impossible I'm going to say that again with God nothing shall be impossible what is impossible of man is possible of God I said to him when do you want to move out and he said well the, the council that's the authorities they came to me the people that can house and they came to me today and they to see where I am but I said but when do you want to move out and he said this week I said to him I said I'm going to pray I said in seven days in seven days in seven days you're going to get somewhere to live and I prayed of him I prayed of him I said God you got, you have to do it God he belongs to you he's your son he loves you amen he belongs to you within seven days he needs somewhere to live and I left it at that I'm going to go on to that story in a bit I'll come back to that and I came and I was just, just speaking to a few others and the ones that were listening I said thank you preacher thank you for that and I came to the Indian man that was just looking at me like he wanted to fight me. <laughs> yeah, I came to the Indian man and I was just, I just said, um, how about you? Do you want me to pray for you? Um, is there anything that you need? And he says, no, 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 it's okay. I don't need anything to pray. It's me, sure, I'm here to pray for you. The guy starts burst out in tears. I'm talking like he starts wailing. He starts bawling. He said, no, 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 please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He starts crying. He starts crying. He starts wailing and he's there and then he starts walking away he said no he'll listen God is touching your heart God is dealing with your heart and he said no no and he's, he's crying his tears are just coming down just pouring out his eyes and he walks far away far away into the park I couldn't even chase him he walked so far away and I went to his friend I said God has touched that man's heart and the, the, <laughs> the young man goes yeah yeah he's, it's a good thing though isn't it preacher that's a good thing and I said yeah but God's touching him and, it's God. and this is the guy that looked at me like he wanted to fight me but I say that to say this is that we can't know what's going on in the hearts of people no matter how they look and when they may be just intensely listening to our voice but we can't look at people's faces we just got to keep speaking because we don't know what's going on in the heart and something was going on in the heart of that man now in regards to the other guy that I prayed for gave his life to the Lord I went back and the tent was gone <laughs> I don't know where he is but the tent was gone and then so I just give God thanks and praise and if you're the son of my voice you're at that place and you like the prodigal son don't want to be where you are God is getting ready to put a ring on your finger and the best robe is going to give you sandals on your feet he's looking to robe you with the robe of his righteousness that's clothe you with his grace and when all he's saying is come back to me I know where you are I know you're in from the beginning but he's saying today can be the day of salvation today can be the day that everything changes so he's saying simply I just stand at the door of your heart and I knock he never pushes his way in he's a gentleman I said God will never push his way into your life he's a gentleman and he's simply saying today is the day so come if you're ready just come reach out to me I'm here for everybody that needs so if you're the sound of my voice and saying God I really think it's time for me to you know to surrender all to you it's a simple prayer and you can say it right here with me say Heavenly Father I come to you today I'm asking you forgive me of every sin that I've committed come into my heart wash me in your blood write my name in the Lamb's book of life fill me with your Holy Spirit and use me for your glory God I thank you for changing everything about me and I thank you for making me a son and a daughter I give you glory and I give you praise in Jesus name amen and amen wherever you are if you said that prayer let me tell you something now you're not going to look no different you're still going to be the same person you was five minutes ago but something has happened on the inside it's called the new birth experience and many of you have said well I've done this before past it felt listen to me no 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 this time is different because God knows you want to get free and the Bible says who the son of man makes free is free indeed so I'm going to pray, Father, for anybody that's at the sound of my voice and may be listening, they may be struggling with alcohol, struggling with drugs, struggling with suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideation, Lord God. Uh, those have been self-harming. Those, Father God, have given up on themselves, discouraged, busted, broke, Father God. Lord, I just lift them up to you right now and at the sound of my voice, I speak healing in every area where they were hurt, Father God, and where they were rejected. 
Lord Father God where they experience trauma and pain Father God where they've gone through things Father God where they don't think they can get over let them know that with you nothing shall be impossible Lord you're a healer Lord God so touch every heart Lord God touch the mind father i break every bondage i break addiction in the name of jesus christ and that's if i bind every spirit that all your people bound god i speak a supernatural release for your people right now in the precious name of jesus god i thank you and i praise you lord that you are the same yesterday today and forever you never change and you're still working miracles today the centurion man said you don't have to come to my house but speak the word only so i speak the word only of deliverance and freedom and liberty because who the son of man makes free is free indeed and i thank you and i praise you for supernatural changes in every area of your people's lives lord i honor you and i bless you because it's not by my it's not by power but it's by your holy spirit save the lord so i thank you that even now father god lord some of them may be homeless they don't have someone to live god i decree and i declare father god that's changing even now in the precious name of jesus what you've done for that young man you're doing it for them god i give you thanks and give you praise father god that you're drawing the right people to these people in the name of jesus you're cutting off negative influences god you're cutting off negative influences in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth you're placing people around them that love them and want to help them lord god and will guide them into the place that you want them god i thank you that you're placing them to good churches where they can hear the word of god and grow yes so father god into the call and the purpose that you have for their life in the name of jesus christ of nazareth you said as babes yes so desire the sincere milk of the word father god god i thank you there'll be desire in your people lord to hear the word and know the word lord in the name of jesus they'll be rooted and grounded in truth lord god which is your son christ jesus lord i guess thank you and i praise you i guess cover your people right now under the precious blood of jesus christ of nazareth i dispatch angels around your people and i speak breakthrough in every air of their lives lord i thank and i praise you that the rest of their lives will be the best of their lives lord with you nothing shall be impossible so i stand upon your word i believe every promise lord god and i simply tell you thank you lord god for bringing home the prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters lord god i thank you for turning around every situation for your glory and your honor and i simply tell you thank you father in the name of jesus we just leave every listener in your hands and i thank you and i praise you lord god for what you're doing even now we just give you glory and we tell you thank you in jesus name amen amen i just want to give god thanks and praise amen if you've been listening like i said if you've been blessed please write into us amen w kevin www.kevintreasure.com amen you can reach me at info at decisions determined destiny.com please reach out to me this has been me kevin treasure with the power of words the winner's mentality be blessed Thank you for tuning in to The Power of Words, The Winner's Mentality. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review. Check out our website, kevintreasure.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You are born to win.